Helen Scott, you were the production designer on all five films in Steve McQueen's anthology series, Small Acts. Uh, where do you begin with such a daunting undertaking like this? Crikey. Um, well, <clears throat> we had all the scripts in one go. So it was, we actually treated it like a series, um, like, a, like a television serial. And in fact, when I took the project on, that is what I thought it was going to be. It was only kind of, um, once we sort of kicked off and realized what we were dealing with, that it became five films. So it wasn't so daunting in the first place. It became daunting later on. Um, but with, you know, having the five scripts in front of us, it was kind of um, doable because we could work out what the arc was and where each film sat within the arc and how to, you know, to get a kind of an overall feel for the whole project and um to so, so, so we we never we never lost sight of the fact that all of the, these stories were connected um and that they all were of one it was you know they were all of the same family it was just trying to kind of nuance each film to give it a to, they, they, each film came from a slightly different time zone you know they were all set in different times they were all in london they were all different characters so they they so they had their own life and their own um face you know each story had its own face and its own meaning and its own tone um i suppose what we were trying also to do was to give it an over you know to give it an umbrella as well um visually so i don't know does that answer your question <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't as hard as we might assume it it was so uh, well this is uh, steve's ode to uh, west indian immigrants in london and like you said the late 60s yeah. and 70s uh so uh what kind of conversations did you have with him did he already have like some ideas of what he wanted each to look like um he didn't really to be truthful i mean he knew what the nub of each story was <clears throat> you know he felt that very strongly and um well obviously because he wrote them and he you know he wanted to tell those stories um but he kind of i mean we talked a lot about about that we talked a lot about the meaning and the um thrust of each story what each one was trying to say but i did co i did go to him initially with with a lot with a lot of reference um images for him to react to and um, it kind of went from there, really. But he he also is very um, trusting of his team, and he once he knew that we, that, or that I, or that any of the other HODs, um, kind of knew what we were talking about. And once he was secure in the knowledge that we had um, done all our research, and that we were working from a truth of our own and that we had you know that we we could support that we we were secure in this we were secure in our kind of research and our understanding of the story he was very happy to um sort of let us out on a, on a long leash he was great that way so yeah i would say that he kind of he kind of sort of lit little fires everywhere and we kind of reacted and expanded and you know it, it, yeah it was a great it was a great experience a great way to work mm -hmm. yeah well yeah. like each each film has a different look and feel but yeah. there's still like a common through line between all of them so how did you develop that sorry how did we develop um and that that like common through line between all of them even though they're so distinct but they're still connected um i like i guess the music is is pretty key isn't it um and also, I kind of, I suppose, I come with my own um, aesthetic as well, you know. And I, I, I suppose, I'm in a sense the com, you know, the common thread between all of the five films. Um, I have a sort of way of working. I have a style of working. I have a kind of um, need for authenticity. I don't like. I always like things to be character driven. I, um, I like things to look as though they've had a history. I don't. I hate it when something's just landed on set with no kind of backstory. So I suppose in that sense, it's the kind of team team behind the work that brings the you know the common thread, if you like. You know. Well, in in the first film, Mangrove, the titular restaurant closed in '92, I think. So how did you go about yeah. reading that? Well, we we had. Um, we had access to certain archives 
we didn't have a lot of visual reference for well we'd had none actually of the interior there were a couple of um um videos on online which we could look at but we weren't absolutely sure where in the you know where in the rest restaurant those interviews had taken place so we had to sort of piece it together from archive footage and from conversations with people and um and also researching all saints road which is where the restaurant was and trying to kind of patch together the um the reality because that's something steve is very keen to honor <clears throat> is the truth of you know he wants he wants it to be as authentic as possible so we did we um in fact our graphics department did a fantastic job in that respect you know they came up with loads of images and um we were able to actually know pretty much what each shop was on the street outside the restaurant we knew what was either side of the mangrove so although it's not it's not literally accurate it is it is quite authentic it has a feel and so and with the interior obviously we we need you need to take dramatic license wherever whatever you do because you're telling the story and it has to kind of um whatever you do has to support the story and be dramatic and have the right tone and the right feel um so yes yeah, that's a kind of a, a sort of mix up i suppose yeah. between um research original thought memory um the brief yeah so it kind of all sort of eventually falls into the same pot and uh hopefully it works mm -hmm. uh, well the second one lover's rock it's it's the one everyone's talking about right now with that yeah. gorgeous yeah. sequence in the middle and i feel like a lot of the time it's about the decor or the props or like the actual design yeah. is not yeah. but in this case it's more about the atmosphere that's created with yeah. the and the movements and the sensuality than yeah. it is the location so how did you approach this one well i i have to confess it was almost my always my favorite script and i think it's because i kind of felt like i knew it <laughs> you know i sort of felt like i'd been there and um so I suppose um, yeah, that it grew from my own kind of um, memory of that time. And so I knew um, the detail of it. I mean, I knew it, I knew it would be in a big, empty, cold, freezing cold house with no central heating. It would be damp, you know, so I, and that, so I knew, I knew kind of the state of the building. I knew how it would feel. I knew how it would smell. I knew what the finishes would likely be like. And then we, um, again, just did loads of research and all the detailed stuff, all the, rec the records, the sound system, the, all, the, all the kind of um, wiring, you know, the food, everything that went along with it that just kind of fed into the detail of that story. Um, was it, but Yeah, it was just a kind of, you're right, it was a sort of exercise in atmosphere really, wasn't it, rather than visuals. And I, th I think, I think, for that story, it was important that um, everything that the actors came into contact with was absolutely honest and real. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't about, you know, the big, the, the big picture in a way. Like you say, it was about, it was about, it was a sensory um, experience. Mm -hmm. Was was that an actual house or a set? Yeah. No, it was an actual house. Okay. The big, big. In fact, it was exactly what I've just described. <laughs> <laughs> A damp old house in North London, and um, yeah, so yeah, we started off with a good, with good bones, and then we we completely redecorated it and um, yeah, made it suit suit the yeah. story and you know, like like details on the furniture, like the plastic covers over the couches yeah. and the wallpaper yeah. too. So how did you go about like picking and choosing what to put in there in the details? well we just do kind of do what we normally do you know which is go we went to prop houses we went to furniture sales charity shops um you know all those kind of usual um places where you go to find your find your set dressing um the the plastic cover was kind of hard oddly because um i thought they would be i thought you could still buy them plastic covers for sofas but you can't and um on top of that, we had to get the right shaped sofa and the right colour sofa. So any kind of off the shelf cover we might have bought would never have fitted the sofa we wanted. So we did have to have that made. Um, but you know, that's kind of not a 
big deal. <laughs> it's just it one of those things. Like, house, yeah. like there are couch covers. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else did we have to do? Um, yeah, I mean, all the all the stuff. Um, I don't can't really remember how much of it you saw, but in the kind of parents' bedroom where they'd moved all the stuff in from the front room into the parents' bedroom, that stuff was all found and hired. Um, yeah, I think we did a bit of we did a bit of printing. You know, we printed linos for the floor, linoleum floor, the kitchen, the bedroom, um, the bathroom. Sorry. Um, and the wallpapers were all vintage wallpapers. They were original vintage wallpapers that we found. Um, so yeah, it's a kind of, it sort of grows. You just start to, you know, you start hunting, you find a few key things that are exactly right. And once you start making choices, other choices fall into place. You know, initially it feels like, oh, crikey, where do we start with this? You know, seems to take ages to find the right sofa and then suddenly you've got the wallpaper and the sofa and then it all follows so yeah and also time's running out so you have to make choices <laughs> but is, is there a favorite set from any of the five that you just really really love designing well i did love do, doing love yeah. yeah i also really enjoyed um the the family home in episode five which is education I really loved doing that because it was a kind of um, 1968, I think it was, that house. The, 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 it was set in, you know, stemmed from the sort of mid 60s and it was a very sort of clean, um, tidy, um, sort of modest house. I really enjoyed doing that. And, and I also enjoyed in episode four, um, which is, Alex Wheatle, the, the hostel that Alex Wheatle lived in in Brixton. I really enjoyed doing that as well. And again, it's just because of the textures um, and the colours and the sort of in that particular one, there's this kind of chaos to it as well. So I, I like I like that. I like doing the chaos and then I like doing the sort of more restrained formal home that is in episode five. So I, I kind of like I always enjoy doing the character driven stuff um whatever that brings you know that's the most interesting thing mm -hmm. awesome mm -hmm. well helen it was great speaking with you thank you so much for your time uh, back here in a little bit